my name is Mrs. Espinoza and welcome to Wood Middle School's first paint night. Welcome to the art rooms. You might be in my room or you might be in Miss Morell's room, but they're both the studio art spaces for Wood Middle School and we're so excited to have you here. I'm going to go over a couple of things to make this a successful evening. Um, if you have an art background, this might be a review, but this is just good information to know to start your painting on your canvas. So if you're in this room listening to the presentation, you already went into the staff lounge where you saw hundreds of postcards for you to get to choose for inspiration. And I'm hoping that you chose one not because it was too easy or too complex, but you just chose one you liked. This does not mean that you are going to copy the exact postcard. You might want to try and that's fine, but if you are copying the exact postcard, you're changing the size so it'll be a little different. Um, so I, what I like to do when I'm just stuck for inspiration is looking at master artwork and picking something I like. So this is a beautiful landscape by Vincent Van Gogh. I might just like the trees. So maybe I'll focus on drawing those trees and then turning that into a painting. Or it might remind me of a place. I might do something totally different. But just get an idea from it or try to recreate it exactly if that's your thing because it'll be your own as you change the size onto the canvas. So you have your inspiration card. Um, then you want to try and lay it out. So there's scrap paper on the tables if you want to do a quick practice. It's good to have it on paper before you get it on your canvas, but everybody has pencils available to them. So you can actually just start drawing right on your canvas. So I'm going to grab my pencil and maybe I'm going to do some trees, some Van Gogh-y type trees. So one thing I want to think about is My composition. So I tell art students all the time, you want to think about, do you want it vertical or horizontal? And you want to make it interesting. So my really kind of babyish example, but it's a good one, is five circles. So if my art teacher says, draw five circles, I did it. There are five circles on this paper. I get an A. Yay me, I'm a fantastic artist. But what's more interesting, these five circles or these five circles? This one is more interesting because they're different sizes, they're overlapping, and they're going all over the space. So that's what you want to do on your canvas. You want to lay things out so that there's like a background, that things are overlapping, um, that it's just interesting. So maybe things are going off the page. All right, so there's my simple design. I didn't put a lot of detail in it because I can paint the details in later. The next thing I want to show you as far as um, painting tips is to do the background first, like I had mentioned. I'm gonna give you some examples up here. So there's some examples of like painting the background first. But I'll go back to the slide. And when you're doing that, you know, obviously if it's a big area, you wanna use a larger brush, and as you get smaller areas, you wanna use a smaller brush. You should all have um, palettes right here for painting. And it's just best to like, with canvas, you wanna do multiple layers as well. This is one layer of blue, but as I go and add a second layer, I'm going to throw in some purple, you'll see the difference between one layer and two. And it looks so much nicer. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it from there, but you can see the difference with canvas. You want to like do your first layer, which is blocking the color. The more layers you build, the better and more rich your painting is going to be. Uh, that's why your canvases are on the small side because I know it's, oh, it's two hours. Well, it probably took us 20 minutes to get settled and pick our picture and then get it on the canvas. And then you'll have like a good little over an hour to paint and then y'all are going to help clean up. So, um, you know, doing multiple layers. I'm going to show you a little bit of information on the color wheel. So you really should know your color wheel with painting. That's why there's color wheels on the tables for you. Um, these three colors make up every color in the world. They're the primary colors. And this is just a graphic organizer showing you how to make all of the other colors, the secondary, the tertiary, but colors are infinite. It all depends on your ratio of paint. So you could get 100 different yellow greens depending on how much yellow and green you mix. So um, know the, your color wheel. Opposite colors really make things pop. Complementary colors, Sunkiss Soda Can, it's an orange soda with blue letters, it pops out at you. Um, Christmas, LA Lakers, those things pop, so if you want a lot of contrast. Um, but my favorite colors to use are analogous colors. 
they're next to each other on the color wheel. Instead of doing one blue for a sky, get a bunch of different blues on the brush and white and throw in some purple. Colors that are next to each other, um, using multiple colors also gives your painting a little bit more depth. So to dull down a color, use the complementary color. So a lot of people, if they want to do a shadow, they'll put black. But really, if you want to shade like an apple and it's red, put a little green in there. It doles down the red. So it looks less um, like you just threw a bunch of black paint in there. So using the opposite color to make a color dull is a great trick. And then there are so many acrylic painting techniques. And I wish that I could be in two rooms to demonstrate all of them. But I'm just going to go over using some thick paint. If you want a palette knife, you can ask me. Varying the pressure. Dry brushing is using like very little paint on the brush and dabbing. Scumble is like scraping like drier paintbrush on top of paint you already have applied. Um, adding water to the paint to make it more translucent. Using multiple colors on the brush, like the analogous colors I talked about, wonderful. Um, using the flat edge of the brush, taping edges, or using pointillism little dots. I'm not expecting you to be experts in all of these. I just want you to know the techniques out there so you can play around with them. And the best way to do acrylic painting is to jump in and just kind of experiment and see what you like. And know that you will all mess up and we'll find a way to fix it together. Um, so also there's black and white on the table for color mixing and you can add as much white as you want and get many, many different tints and add black and get many, many shades. That was another color theory slide. And so basically, if you remember, your composition tips on like how to sketch it out and just do the big areas first and then use big brushes for the large areas and smaller brushes for the details, you really are going to have a successful painting. So I hope you have fun. I will be floating around between the two rooms as well as Miss Ryan from Rockville High School. She will be helping out and um, Mr. Espinosa will be helping out refilling paints and some other art students will be helping. So we hope you have an enjoyable evening and I can't wait to see the paintings when they're done. Thanks for coming.